can we respond to the spirit with a praise from our lips come on praise from our hands praise from our hearts come on lift up the name of Jesus come on lift up the name of Jesus exalt him hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus come on let everything that has breath praise you the Lord somebody shout praise the Lord amen can you clap your hands on a Sunday night amen can you worship him on a Sunday night amen 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 this atmosphere is absolutely dangerous because there's an unction of the Holy Ghost that's in this house right now and can I tell you how I feel in the room can I tell you what I feel in the spirit I just want to tell you and this is not hyperbole this is not a cliche this is not some metaphorical speaking to get you emotional but I want to tell you that a miracle can happen in this room tonight I said a miracle can happen tonight not tomorrow night not the next day I'm telling you where faith is in the room there's a God that's working that's a God Come on, you are. If there's an impossibility, there's a miracle worker in the house. Come on, there's a miracle worker in the room. Woo, yes, yes, Jesus. Amen. It is my, it is my assignment tonight in the Holy Ghost to help convince you to take part in the miracle working process. I know that God can do anything, and He can. I know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think, and he can. But like Pastor said, I'll second that motion and tell you that it works a whole lot faster and a whole lot better when we get involved with what God is doing. Come on, somebody's prayer list is getting checked off. Somebody, somebody's, come on, somebody's request and petition has been made known unto God, and there's a miracle. There's a miracle in the midst. Amen. Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2 and verse 1. Amen. For your consideration tonight and while you're turning there, it has been such a tremendous time in the Holy Ghost as God's Spirit has met us. And uh, we are rejoicing for every soul, every soul that's been baptized thus far, filled with God's Spirit. Amen. Are we excited about what God is doing? Amen. Are we excited about what God is doing? Amen. God's been doing great things. Amen. To all the visitors that are in the room. Amen. We are so glad. And I'm saying we. And I'm a visiting preacher. But I'm just incorporating myself in the Soul Harbors family. And so I'm going to say we are excited for all the visitors that are here tonight. Amen. I want to give you a fair warning. Fair warning. I, I know that some of you, and I, I, you've probably heard enough sermons from me by now in this revival to kind of get a sense. Every preacher has his own style, his own delivery. Hey, if you don't like the way I preach, just 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 wait. Revival will be over at some point. Amen. But tonight, tonight I feel an unction to preach plainly and practically. I I don't want to preach philosophically. I don't. My only job tonight is to convince you that a miracle can happen if you get involved with it. That's it. If I can convince somebody of that, I want to tell you somebody's going to leave healed tonight. I, I'm in the persuasion point right now. Come on. If you can't believe it now, come on. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. Amen. Second Kings. 
two and one when you have a shot. Amen. The Bible says, and it came to pass that when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha, two different men, the prophet, the son of the prophet, the student. Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. The Bible says that Elijah said unto Elisha, Terry here. Somebody say, stay here. Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. This was the prophet speaking to the student. But the response of Elisha is one to take note of tonight. The Bible says that Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, hear this, I will not. I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. One more proportion of scripture tonight for your consideration. Genesis. In the book of Genesis 32 and 26, the Bible unfolds the passage of text where Jacob is wrestling with the angel. Anybody remember that in your Bible? Jacob is wrestling with the angel. And wrestling with the angel, he is doing because he desires to be blessed by the Lord. I, I don't know if that speaks to anybody in the room, but I think there's some people in the house that you're looking for a blessing from God. You're needing something from God. Any, am I preaching to anybody yet in the room? You're needing something from the Lord. There was something in the spirit of Jacob as he wrestles with the angel whom was the theophany of God face to face wrestling with him. The Bible says that the angel of the Lord spoke up and said to let me go for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not. I will not let thee go. Except, I, I pray, I, I, know, I know we're supposed to be kind and cordial, nice Christians. I pray you get an attitude before tonight is over. I said, if you want a miracle bad enough, I pray you get an attitude in your spirit. He said, I will not accept thou bless me tonight with the help of God I want to preach from this thought the mantle of stubbornness the mantle of stubbornness now I, I know that word probably offends some hypersensitive people and so I've subtitled it just to make you feel a little better if you want a subtitle, subtitle, i.e., the mantle of tenacity. But I'm stubborn, so I like stubborn better. Amen. Somebody turn to your neighbor and ask them this question. Are you stubborn? Oh, I feel my help in the room right now. <laughs> Amen. If you feel a miracle working power in the room. Somebody clap your hands unto the Lord. Come on, if you're going to get involved in the miracle working process, somebody clap your hands. Come on, if you believe help is on the way, clap your hands. Come on, if you believe there's healing virtue in the house, clap your hands. Come on, if you believe your backslidden children can come back home, I want you to praise God like they're on the pew next to you. Come on, I wish somebody would worship God like there's a miracle worker in the house. Amen. I feel my help in the room. Somebody shout stubborn. 
Amen. You may be seated tonight. Amen. So glad my sister-in-law is in the house tonight. Amen. The mantle of stubbornness. I've already given you a warning. I'm not sure if there is a such thing as a, a, a sermon disclaimer. But if I were to give you one, the points that I will make to you tonight are practically ingrained in Scripture. But the examples I might use tonight may be so practical that it might propel somebody to be convinced that there's a miracle that can happen if you're desperate enough. And for the launching of this, I was very careful in trying to come up with a persuasion point for you tonight. The only adjective that I can think that properly defines, and I know the definition because I looked it up in Webster's Dictionary, that can properly define what I feel in my spirit, what God wants us to get in our spirit, is the adjective stubborn. Now, I know, I know when, I, when I said the word stubborn, there was an uneasiness that stepped over the room. And when I asked you to ask your neighbor, are you stubborn? Somebody almost got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Somebody felt a witness in their spirit. I want, to be, I want you to be careful. Don't, don't, don't elbow your husband in the ribs. And don't pinch your wife on the pew. Throwing hints. Be careful. But there's something that came over the room because every last one of us understand the humanistic quality, if I can use that word, of stubbornness. Because every last one of us have at some point in life, if we're not that individual, have encountered someone that possessed the characteristic of stubbornness. And stubbornness makes us uneasy because where stubbornness is in the room, it somehow has the ability, hear me right now, it has the ability to change the emotions of an atmosphere because stubbornness is a powerful, powerful human emotion. If you need an example, this is where the practical, the practical preaching starts. I, I would imagine that if you took a family road trip, doesn't matter the destination, doesn't matter how far, if you took a family road trip, all it takes is one, somebody shout one. one. All it takes is one stubborn somebody. Well, I feel my help in the room to make that road trip a little miserable. Anybody want a scenario? Hunger pains start to hit you. And you're going down the highway and DOTD has provided us with exit signs that gives us food choices. Brother Allen's laughing over there. <laughs> and so you have the ability to see the options of food on the next exit. So you begin to inquire within the vehicle because you're hungry. I'm not talking about my wife. I just want to just exclude her from this conversation. <laughs> and you begin to inquire in the vehicle. 
and you begin to look at the options and that one stubborn somebody looks at those options and they squint their eyes and they said, uh, not feeling any of those. I, 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 think, I, I think I'm in the right church right now. And so their stubbornness begins to change the options and so you're forced to pass the exit. But there's another exit. Another sign. More options. And that same stubborn somebody. They look at that sign. I'm not feeling any of those either. And now their emotion, their emotional state of mind is now affecting the atmosphere. Because you went from hungry to hangry. Boy, I'm preaching the truth right now. And now they're affecting you because you're still hungry. And there's still options. And all of a sudden your inquiry now goes to, well, what do you want? Well, I think I'm preaching all right right now. Because emotions, stubbornness has a way of affecting the atmosphere. I would venture to say that if you are an employee on a job right now and you possess the quality of stubbornness, can I just, can I just help you out on a Sunday night? If you continue in your stubbornness, you might not be employed too much longer. Stubbornness. Stubbornness has a way of affecting things, moving things, changing things. Because stubbornness is an emotion that I would venture to say that it's not pleasant to be around stubborn individuals. They, their, their, their ability to be hardened, their, their ability to be persistent, their, their ability to be, to be fixed in their mindset can make for uncomfortable situations. But I come to help somebody on a Sunday night. It's all right if I help you a little while. I come to help somebody on a Sunday night because what I'm preaching about, what I'm talking about, we're not talking about earthly things. We're, we're not talking about physical things. And, and I've come to a realization that I, I believe and I understand that, that stubbornness can cause emotional uneasiness and stubbornness can be a quality that might not be desirable for you to possess in the physical. But if you can somehow muster up some stubbornness in your spirit, I wish somebody was hearing me right now. If you can somehow muster up some stubbornness in your prayers, some stubbornness in your faithfulness, some stubbornness in your praise. I wish if you can somehow muster up and get fixed on some stuff in the spirit. I come to tell you that there's a way that you can move heaven and earth and you can almost arm twist obligate God to move on your behalf. If you've got a miracle that you're waiting for, I just want to know, are you stubborn? Oh, I wish somebody was hearing right now. I just want to know uh, if you've got some things you're praying for. Uh, if you've got some stuff you're asking God for. Uh, if you've got some prayers you need answered. Uh, some miracles you need moving. Uh, I just want to know if you're stubborn. Now, some of you, some of you might not be convinced yet. So I, I, I just want to tell you a story right now story and you're hearing the text that we read if you can put it back on the screen we're going to go through these so quickly second kings two and one i i know we read bible stories but can i tell you that when i try to read the bible i want it to make so much sense in my mind that i can't unsee it and so 
I, I just want to take you through the journey in this text because what you read is really, we, we, try, we try to make the text say something that it's not saying. And there's something in this, in, this, in this story that I pray we don't miss. And I pray we get it deep down in our spirit. Because the Bible unfolds the story that Elijah the prophet, the Elijah the Tishbite, the prophet of God, he is the man of God, the prophet, the great seer. He is, he is the pastor if you will. Uh, he is the man of God with the cloak of God, uh, the mantle of God in his hand. Uh, and the Bible says that it came time uh, that God, that God was going to take him up, uh, translate him, uh, that he was going to remove him from the earth as he did. Enoch uh, translated him. A whirlwind was going to catch him up into heavenlies uh, because there was something supernatural that was on the brink. I hope somebody's hearing what I'm telling you. There was something supernatural that was about to happen. I don't know if you feel what I feel, but there's something supernatural that stepped in the church this Sunday. I felt it all morning long, and I feel it in the room right now. I just come to tell you something supernatural is about to happen. I just come to tell you I feel the heavens are about to open. The Bible says that it came time that God was going to catch up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. Anybody remember this story? But the Bible begins to tell us something, begins to tell us something about a conversation that began to unfold between Elijah with a J and Elisha with an SH, two different men. Elijah the prophet. And Elisha, the son of the prophet, the pupil, the student, if you will. It's all right if I just paint this image for you right now. And the Bible says that Elijah sensed the Spirit of God moving. The Spirit of God began to speak to him. and He was stationed at Gilgal. And Elijah heard the voice of God speak to him. And the Spirit of God told him to go from Gilgal to Bethel. But God was speaking to Elijah. Yes, sir. He was not talking to Elisha. Everybody catch it so far. Yes, sir. So Elijah is now, he's now tasked with getting rid of this young man. Because God was talking to him. He was not speaking to Elisha. I, I want to tell somebody right now in the Holy Ghost, can I just, just push the pause button? Can I tell you that sometimes the thing that is inhibiting you from your breakthrough are the people that you are associated with? I wish this thing was on right now. Hey, can I tell you, if somebody's trying to keep you uh, from revival services, uh, I just want to tell you, you got to push your way uh, through people uh, because you might just miss your miracle. Uh, you might just miss a breakthrough. Uh, you got to step away. So Elijah, Elijah is forced to, the, is, he's the force, he's forced to divide himself from Elisha. But what happened next? Uh, Brother Mason, I just want you to stand right back here with me. I, I want them to see us real good. I want you to understand this relationship. Prophet. Student. Everybody got it? I want you to see this the way I see it. I might mess this thing up, but at least we're going to see it the way I see it. He said, the Spirit of God spoke to me, and God told me that I'm going down to Bethel. And so what I need you to do, Elisha, he said, Terry, here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. In other words, uh, he looks him in the face, uh, and he tells him, stay right here. Don't move. I'm going to Bethel, but I want you to stay here. And I can see Elisha turn his shoulders and get ready to walk off. And all of a sudden, is this thing going? Terry stayed right here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. 
And he, oh, I can see him motioning and getting ready to make his journey down to Bethel. And all of a sudden, this young man, the student, the saint, pastor, saint, he speaks up and he says, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not. Now, I know you read the Bible, and I know every Bible character is good in your eyes. But if Elisha wasn't a prophet to be, this looks like rebellion. But because I know he's a prophet to be, the only adjective I can attribute to his spirit right now is Now, I don't know. I don't know how things work around here. I know your pastor's sitting up there with a smile on his face, and he's so nice, and he's always laughing. I just want to tell you, if your pastor kindly asks you, brother, I think it would be a good idea to do such and such. I just want to tell you what a good response is not. Yeah, come on, brother Williams. Yeah, preach I wish I had some help in the room, but Alan, you gonna help me preach or what? I don't think it's a good idea for you to look your pastor in the face and say, Pastor, I ain't going to do it. Boy, that's a whole lot of laughing, which means I'm telling the truth right now. You're going to see a whole, a whole other side of the old man of God. Let the whole church say amen. amen. But what he tells him is, I will not. That is a bold proclamation. That is a decisive response. Something in him said, I'm not doing it. Wait a minute. I can see Elijah almost confused at this response. The text almost implies confusion because he, he didn't respond further. The Bible says, so, I guess we're going to Bethel. So they're going down to Bethel. I, I got to speed this up because I don't want to take too much time. And they're going down to Bethel. And the Bible says uh, that the Spirit of God spoke to him again. Uh, and as he's stationed at Bethel, uh, now God speaks to him uh, in verse 4. Uh, and he said, Elijah, I want you to go down uh, to Jericho. And so he turns again uh, and he tries to have the conversation again. Uh, hey, God spoke to me. He told me to go down to Jericho. Uh, Terry, here, I pray thee. Uh, I want you to stay right here. Uh, God sent me to Jericho. And God, I told you, stay right here. Do not move. Right. Don't budge. Mm -hmm. Not one muscle. And so emotions. Now, I, I don't know if something's going on in this boy's head or not. I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe Brother Mason is. But he said, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not. Now you might can get away with telling your pastor no once. But twice you're going to be in that office. But he cannot get rid of him. And so they're walking and they're going. And I guess we're going down to Jericho. But the time of the supernatural is on the brink. The time that God is going to open up the heavens is so close. And so God speaks to Elijah one more time in verse 6. And he said, Elijah, now I want you to go down to Jordan. And if you read the text further, the Bible says in verse 8 that as they came to the Jordan River, that there was a mantle in the hand of Elijah and they came to the waters and they came to the point of no return and he said listen when we cross this river we can't go back and so the Bible says he smote the waters and the waters parted hither and thither he said if you come in with me we're not going back I just come to tell somebody you got to make up in your mind that you refuse to leave without a miracle you refuse to you gotta refuse to leave without a breakthrough so they crossed the river Jordan 
In verse 9 is where things really get interesting. I hope, in it, I hope you're following the way I see it. And so verse 9 gets really interesting because the Bible says that when they crossed over the Jordan River that Elijah's realizing this boy is not listening. Something's going on in his head. I don't know if he's missing some screws. I don't know if something's missing. I've told him to stay and he keeps following me. I told him to tarry here and he keeps following me. And so I got to figure out what's going on because God, I can feel something supernatural is about to happen. And can I tell you that what Elijah did not know about Elisha is that Elijah sensed that the supernatural was on the way and Elisha just wanted to be involved in it. I don't think you're hearing what I'm telling you. Hey, can I tell you, I showed up on a Sunday night just to try to figure out if you're stubborn enough to get what you've been praying for. If you're stubborn enough to convince God that, God, I'm not going to stop this fast until something breaks. I'm not... and so they're walking and they're walking and they're moving and the mantle of God is in the hand of the prophet of God and he turns around he said, son, I don't know what's going on. He said, but, I, but the Lord's trying to separate me from you. But you won't leave. What's the problem? What's the deal? And all of a sudden, I can see the emotion on this young man's face. I can see the stirring in his spirit. And he told this prophet, I just want to tell you, I haven't been following you for no reason. He said, I haven't been following you for no reason. He said, he said, I... I just watched you part the waters of Jordan with a mantle in your hand. I just watched you. I just watched you. I watched you call down fire from heaven. I, I, I watched you do the supernatural. I, I watched you do some stuff. He said, I just want you to know that that spirit that's upon you. I just want a double portion of that spirit. I just come to ask somebody why you keep showing up and your prayer hasn't been answered yet. Why you keep being faithful and God hasn't moved yet. Why you keep showing up to church. I'll tell you why. I think there's somebody in the room that you're just stubborn enough to keep on believing God even when you haven't seen it yet. I just want to know if you're stubborn enough. I just got to get my hands on a miracle. I just got to get my hands on a mantle. I just got to get, I wish somebody would. My God, I wish I wish I could convince you that there's a way to move God. There's a way to convince God. There's a way to. some of your response I don't think I'm doing a good job convincing you yet uh, can I tell you there's something uh, that you gotta get in your spirit uh, when you've reached a point of desperation uh, that desperation has to turn uh, into tenacity uh, desperation has to turn uh, into stubbornness uh, you've got to get something in your spirit uh, that you said I will not uh, let thee go uh, until until uh, until I don't, I don't know if you got it in your spirit yet. Uh, you've got to get an absolute attitude. Maybe, 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 maybe. Maybe, maybe Elijah, Elijah's not doing it for you. So maybe I, I got to preach a little more practically for you. I'm convinced and I've seen it enough to tell you without a shadow of a doubt uh, that stubborn people know how to get what they want. I wish I had an amen in the house. Stubborn people know how to get what they want. You don't believe me, do you? I, I just want to know if anybody in the room is stubborn. Uh, 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 well, no, no, you don't believe me yet. I, 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 I cannot tell you, I, I've seen it. I remember being a young man when, when, when 
the, the flow or nature of life and biology started taking place in my teenage body. And testosterone started flowing and hormones started raging. And I started looking at women a whole lot different. Because boys are supposed to like girls. I thought I was in a preaching church. right? And girls are supposed to like boys. That's the way that God created. I, I don't, don't, do I need to part there? So my eyes started looking and teenagers fantasize about their adult life. And so, and so as a young man, you do it. We've all done it. I would look at couples and I, I would imagine that when I was older, that's the kind of couple I wanted to be like. Hashtag couple goals. I want to drive that kind of car, that kind of house. That kind of money, and you guessed it, that kind of wife. But the fabrics of some relationships were extremely confusing to me. Now, you don't have to agree with me. This is my personal assessment. The fabrics of some relationships made absolutely no sense to me. Because I would look at the wife. And my, my futuristic fantasy was, man, my God, bless God, I pray I marry a woman like that one day. I'm just a teenager. It's okay to dream. And while I was thinking about my future, my eyes happened to glaze over to her counterpart. And then I looked back at her. And I look back at the counterpart. And I squint my eyes and I look back at her. Ain't no way. Yeah. <laughs> but I wish I had somebody helping me right now. <laughs> Ain't no way. She ended up with him. Nope. Won't believe it. Can't make me believe it. I said, this is my own personal assessment. I am confused at this relationship because it does not look as if this woman would give this man the type of day, time of day. Uh, nod your head if you've seen it. You know you've seen it. And I'm trying to figure out how that has happened. It's quite possible. It's quite practical that maybe this brother might just be filthy rich. And she don't care what he looks like. He's got a good 401k. His stocks are doing good. Good life insurance policy. She don't care if he don't have teeth. He's got money. Listen, this is the pulpit. I'm telling the truth. But in my mind, in my eyes, it doesn't make sense. But what if he doesn't? How in the world did this brother convince this woman to entertain him? Can I submit to you what my idea is? I think I figured out that maybe this brother didn't know the meaning of no. I'm going to help some teenagers out right now. Some college and career folks. Maybe when she told him, I don't like you, he said, good. I, I warned you this was practical preaching. I'm trying to convince somebody you got to get something in your... Maybe when she said, don't call me anymore. I'll call you tomorrow. No more cards, no more texts. If you DM me one more time, he said, I'll be back. Maybe it's quite possible that something in him was so determined that he could not see himself without her. That his persistence, 
his persuasion, his spirit somehow changed her emotions about him. Well, I'm helping a brother out in the room right now. Because stubbornness has a way of changing emotions. And stubborn people don't quit. And stubborn people don't give up. And when she said no, he kept coming. When she said And it's quite possible that she could, that that he was convincing enough that he might not have been the most attractive to her, but it was something about his spirit that 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 she knew. I I, I like a man that won't give up. I like somebody that knows what they want. I like somebody that's determined. That there's a grit in their spirit. That there's a no quitting. I wish somebody was hearing what I'm telling you. Hey, can I tell you that sometimes uh, you might not be qualified enough uh, to come in the presence of God uh, and you are unworthy uh, to even get one ounce of his glory, uh, but that won't stop me uh, from throwing up my hands uh, and calling out to God. Uh, I'm unworthy, uh, but I'm going to keep coming. Uh, I'm broken, uh, but I'm I might be broken, uh, but I'm going to keep running it out uh, until I get a breakthrough. Uh, I might be a mess, uh, but I'm going to keep on coming uh, until God. I wish somebody be, would be stubborn about five seconds. Uh, I don't care what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to keep showing up. I wish somebody would praise God like you were stubborn. My God, I wish I had a tambourine right now. I wish somebody would praise God uh, like you don't care about your neighbor. Uh, I know I got an answer for prayer, uh, but I'm going to keep coming. Come on, somebody's not stubborn enough yet. Some of you think that I've lost my mind preaching like I'm preaching. Uh, but can I just tell you that blind Bartimaeus uh, would have stayed blind uh, had he listened to his friends. Uh, that said blind Bartimaeus, uh, you might as well tone it down a little bit. Uh, why are you crying out to God? Uh, they said they tried to convince him uh, to close his mouth. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that the more they convinced him uh, to close his mouth, uh, that the louder he cried, uh, the more a great deal. I don't know if you're hearing me right now. You're going to stay blind. You're going to stay sick. You're going to stay broken. If you shut your mouth, I just come to tell you stubborn people can't be quiet. I don't think somebody's hearing me on a Sunday night. I said this is the house of God where you're allowed to shout unto God. You're allowed to pray. You're allowed to praise. Stubborn. Somebody shout stubborn. I just come to tell you that the more they tried to persuade Bartimaeus uh, to be quiet, uh, the more he shouted, uh, the more he cried, uh, the more because because blind Bartimaeus said, uh, I'm tired of being blind. Uh, I'm tired of being in the dark uh, and stubborn people uh, know how to get God's attention. I just want to know, are you stubborn? You don't style stubborn yet. Can I tell you that some of you are up against some stuff uh, and the adversary has been kicking your teeth in. And it's not until you get mad at the devil. You get mad at the adversary. You get mad at doubt itself. Uh, that's been trying to convince you that God is not able. Uh, that you get a stubbornness in your spirit. Uh, and you said, I'm not leaving uh, until I get a blessing. Uh, I'm not leaving uh, until I get a breakthrough. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Jacob, you got to let me go today. I'm not leaving until you're blessed. I will not. Somebody needs to shout it. I will not. Woo! You've got to get a spirit of refusal to be denied. I refuse to be denied. I refuse to leave the same way. I refuse. I 
I, I, I know some of you saying this preacher needs to stay in the book. Can I bring you to the book? Uh, Luke 18 and 2 declares uh, that there was a woman in a city uh, that had the adversary. Uh, she had the importunities uh, of an adversary uh, that she owed a great debt. Uh, but in, the, in that city, the Bible says uh, that there was a judge that feared not God, uh, nor neither did he have regard for man. And the Bible said that that widow came to that judge and she began to petition and beg him and she said avenge me of my adversary I just want to know if the adversary has been warring against anybody I just want to know if the adversary has been fighting anybody and you trying to get him off your back and you trying to get him off of your children and you trying to get his hands off of your finances and So she's trying to get alleviated from the adversary. But the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says that the judge that she begged and petitioned to, that he would not avenge her for a while. I want them to see that. The Bible says that he would not avenge her for a while. Is it verse 3? He would not. Verse 5. Verse 5. He would not avenge her for a while. But the Bible says that because she troubled him. I, I don't think, I, I, w I really want you to see what I'm trying to tell you. The Bible says that this judge, uh, she kept asking uh, and he kept declining her. She kept asking uh, and he kept declining her. Uh, and him not avenging her for a while means that he was a stubborn judge. Hope somebody's catching what I'm putting up right now. He was a stubborn judge. But can I tell you that sometimes the only way you're going to get a breakthrough is you got to outlast the stubbornness of your adversary. I don't think you're hearing what I'm telling you. I'll tell you why you can't quit. It's because there's an adversary. He's too stubborn to quit fighting you. He's too stubborn to quit attacking you. He's too stubborn. And the only way you're going to win is you can't quit either. You got to keep on dancing. You got to keep on running. You got to keep on shot. I wish somebody would know how to be stubborn in the house. Hey, if the devil's not quitting, if the adversary is too stubborn to let me go, I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on fighting and tell. I wish somebody would lose your mind right now. You got to outlast the stubbornness of the adversary that's warring against you. You got to fight tooth and nail. You got to keep on coming. She said, avenge me. Avenge me of my adversary. And it came a point that the judge had to let her go because she was too stubborn. I hope somebody's hearing me right now. She was too stubborn to leave with her prayer unanswered. I hope, I hope I'm getting into somebody's spirit right now. I just want to know, are you stubborn? Stubborn ain't pretty. Stubborn ain't cute. Stubbornness is quite ugly. And it's emotion. But can I tell you why? Why I believe stubbornness is a spirit that we need to get. It's all right if I just tell you. Because I happen to look it up in the dictionary. And stubbornness ain't what you think it is. I know you think that stubbornness is a dirty little word. But if you only knew what stubbornness really meant. Oh my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, can I get some help? Can I get some help? If you are, yeah, you, I'm talking, yeah, I need some help. If, I, if you only knew what stubbornness really meant, there'll be a whole lot of stubborn people in this house tonight.
Anybody want to know what stubbornness means? Stubbornness, by definition, Brother Seth, is the refusal to change your mind or your course of action in spite of the circumstance. I don't think you heard what I just said. The refusal to change your mind or what you've been doing despite what you're going through. I don't think you heard what I said. I said you might be going through stuff that's saying quit. You might be going through stuff that says give in. But stubborn people says, I'm going to keep going to church. I'm going to keep on dancing. I'm going to keep on running. I'm going to keep on shouting. I'm going to... Stubborn people don't quit. See, some of you ain't stubborn enough. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. I'm trying to convince you. If you want a miracle, you need to be stubborn. If you want a breakthrough, you need to... I'm not letting you go. I will not let them go. I don't know if that definition did it for you. The refusal to change your mind. Hey, I'm not changing my mind. I still believe God's a miracle worker. I don't care what the devil says. I don't care what your friends say. I don't care what your enemies say. I still believe that God is a soul saver. That God is a life changer. That God is a heart healer. That God is a way maker. That God... I've seen way too many tumors be healed. I've seen way too much cancer. But you got to get an attitude of refusal. Somebody, I want you, I want you to say this like you really mean that I refuse to quit. I don't think you meant that. I want you to say it like the adversary has been trying to make you quit. The adversary has been trying to make you stop. The adversary has been trying to make you doubt. I want you to say it like you've got stubbornness in your spirit. Come on, say it again. You, you know, you know, you know, you know, sometimes you just need a good slap to wake you up. Oh, yeah. Now, it's a good slap to get your attention. Right. The only problem is if you don't register the slap, you ain't going to fight back. The devil's been fighting some of you and you ain't even registered yet. You are under spiritual attack. And your weapon of recourse has been to run. I wish somebody would say, I ain't running no more. Boy, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done preaching. I, I, I just got to tell you one more story because it's too good not to tell. I remember being a young man and I seen something I, I never saw in my life. I went to a public school. Any, any public? I know y'all got a church school. Praise God for church church school. Anybody in the house went to public school? Just, I just want to see your hand. Yeah. I went to public school. I went to public school in the country where kids were bad. I went to public school where I saw some good old fights. Some good old Golden Corral fights. That's an inside joke. I seen some really good fights. I know I'm not condoning violence, but I just want to tell you, I've seen some good ones. But one of the most disturbing fights I saw in my life, there was this little bitty guy. He decided to pick on one of the football players. I have no idea what was going on in his brain. 
But everybody was saying, hey, you, it might be a good idea to leave that dude alone. But he, he had Napoleon syndrome. Short man's kind of play. He's picking on this football player, six foot four, and he ain't get to five four yet. He's picking on him, and everybody's saying, hey, man, you leave him alone. Leave him. It got to the point that this dude had enough. He picks him up. I need some help. I need the flow. I need the flow. Come on, you was doing good. Yeah, give me some of that. Yeah, that right there. He picked him up. Body slammed him. And he started beating him to a pulp. Yeah. Listen, this, this wasn't nothing good about this fight. We was like, no, stop. You're going to kill him. All of a sudden, I seen something I never seen in my life. I never, I never seen such a thing. He gets up. They finally pull him off of him. The boy is bleeding. He's bloodied. He's got bruises. His eyes are turning black already. He's got nodules on his head. He gets up and he's staggering. Can barely stand up. Staggering and swaying. Eyes are crossed. And out of his mouth, Brother Alan Michael, I hear something I never heard somebody say in their life. He's staggering. He can barely see. And he looks at that boy, six foot four. He said, you want some more of this? <laughs> We're looking at him. They must have knocked him unconscious or senseless or something. They said, bro, I don't know if anybody's informed you. You were on the ground. You were the one getting beat up. You didn't give him nothing. But maybe something in him, there was a fight in him. It says, you might knock me down one time, and I might not can see straight, but that won't stop me from swinging again. Rejoice not against me, oh my enemy. If I fall, I shall arise. And when I sit in darkness, I'm not staying there. When the devil's attacking me, when the devil's fighting me, I'm, I'm too stubborn to quit fighting. Hey, I'm too... I just want to know, are you stubborn? I just want to know, hey, stubborn people, uh, you can't keep them in their pew. Uh, you can't keep them quiet. Uh, you can't shut them up. Uh, they... I just want to know if anybody's stubborn in the room. I just want to know if you need a miracle and you was trying to convince God to move on your behalf. I just want to know, are you stubborn? I wish somebody would be stubborn right now in the Holy Ghost. I wish somebody would lift up your voice. I wish you would shout unto God. I wish somebody... Go! Come on, you're not trying to convince me. You're trying to convince God. God, I need my parents to be saved. God, I need my children to come back home. God. Oh, Come on, I don't know if you're stubborn enough yet. Thank you so much for joining us for service today on live stream. If you'd like to see more content from Souls Harbor, you can check our YouTube channel out. And if you'd like to know some details about the various ministries of Souls Harbor, you can see some of that on our website. We're praying for you and believing that God's moving on you and that his hand is going to work a miracle in your life.